Next, let's create our collectible objects. Create a new cube and rename it Pickup. Reset the Pickup's transform to Origin. Focus the Scene View camera on the Pickup object. The Player Game object is in the way. Let's select the Player Game object and deselect the checkbox in front of the Name field. This is the game object's active checkbox. Deselecting it will deactivate the game object in the scene. This will give us a clear working space for our new pickup object. The cube is buried in the plane, just like our player's sphere was when we started this project. The cube is also a regular shape, one by one by one. So let's lift it up by half a unit, and we know it's resting on the plane. This cube will be our pickup object. To be effective, it must attract the attention of the player. So let's make the cube more attractive. We will start by making it smaller. This will also give it the effect of floating above the play area. Both will help identify this object as special. Not enough, however. Let's tilt it over. 45, 45, 45 in each of the axes of the transform's rotation. Better, but not sexy enough. One thing I feel certainly attracts the attention of a player, and that is movement. So let's rotate the cube. To do this, we need a script. With the pickup object selected, use the Add Component button in the inspector. Create a new script called Rotator. Click Create and Add to confirm. Organize the script by placing it in the Scripts folder and open it for editing. We want the cube to spin, and we want to do it with this script. Let's remove the sample code we don't need. We will not be using forces, so we can use update rather than fixed update. We have already set the transform rotation in the transform component to 45, 45, 45 for the x, y, and z axes, but these values don't change by themselves. We want to change these values every frame. To make the cube spin, we don't want to set the transform rotation but we want to rotate the transform. Next, type transform inside update. Select it and hold down the control key on the PC or the command key on the Mac and type single quote. Again, this brings up the page with the search term transform. Select transform. This brings up the transform page in the documentation. There are two main ways to affect the transform. These are Translate and Rotate. Translate moves the game object by its transform. Rotate rotates the game object by its transform. We will use Rotate. So let's click on the link, and this brings up the page for Transform Rotate. Note again the two signatures and the two possible overrides, one using a vector 3 and the other using three float values for x, y, and z. Both overrides have the optional parameter space which we will leave at default for this lesson. Again, we will choose the most simple form that only uses the vector 3 for direction. Let's return to our code. After transform, and make sure transform is written to begin with a lowercase t, write rotate new vector 3 15 30 45. Now this action also needs to be smooth and frame rate independent. So we need to multiply the vector3 value by time.delta time. Save this script and return to Unity. Test by entering play mode, and our pickup object rotates. Let's exit play mode. OK, we have the start of a working pickup object. Next, we want to place these around the game area. But before we do this, we need to do one important step. We need to make our pickup object into a prefab. So remember, a prefab is an asset that contains a template or blueprint of a game object or game object family. We create a prefab from an existing game object or game object family, and once created, we can use this prefab in any scene in our current project. With a prefab of our pickup object, we will be able to make changes to a single instance in our scene or to the prefab asset itself, and all of the pickup objects in our game will be updated with those changes. So, first, let's create a folder to hold our prefabs. 
We want this folder on our root or top level of our project. So select the project view and make sure that no other item or directory is highlighted. And then choose Create Folder. Rename this folder Prefabs. Now drag the pickup game object from our hierarchy and place it into our Prefabs folder. When we drag an item from our hierarchy into our project view, we create a new Prefab asset containing a template or blueprint of our game object or game object family. Before we spread our collectibles around the game area, we should create a new game object to hold our pickups and to help organize our hierarchy. Let's create a new game object and call it Pickups. Check to make sure this parent game object is at origin and drag our pickup game object into it. Now we want to spread a number of these pickup objects around the play area. First, make sure we have the pickup game object selected, not the parent. Now let's move into a top down view by clicking on the gizmo in the upper right of our scene view. Let's back out a little so we can see the entire game area. Grab the pickup game object, and it doesn't move in the scene the way we want it to. Note how the cube is moving in relation to its gizmo, which is tilted over. What we are seeing is the game object moving in local mode. We really want to move the pickup game object aligned with the ground. Change the editor to global mode. Now see how the orientation of the gizmo changes, and now we can drag our game object around relative to the world's global axes. So let's lay down a few of these in the game area. Take our first pickup object and place it into the game area, someplace convenient. I'm going to place mine at the top. With the game object selected, duplicate it. This can be done either by selecting Edit, Duplicate, or by using the hotkey combination. This is Command D on the Mac or Control D on the PC. Now we place the second instance of the prefab. Using the hotkeys, we will create a few more, placing them around the play area. Note that I'm moving parallel to the ground or the XZ plane by selecting the XZ plane at the center of the gizmo. OK, that's 12. Let's hit play and test. Excellent. These pickup prefabs are working great. The only thing that I want them to do now is stand out more against the background walls and player game object. Let's change their color. To do this, we need another material. To make things easy, we can simply select our existing material and duplicate it. Let's rename this new material Pickup. With the materials selected in the project view, let's change the albedo color property to yellow. Now we can change the color of the prefab by changing the prefab's material. We can do this in two ways. We can change the material on just one instantiated prefab. If we do this, we must remember to use the Apply button to apply those changes to the prefab asset. Otherwise, we will only change the material on this single instance. The other way, which is perhaps more simple, is to simply change the material on the prefab asset directly. Let's hit play and test. There, that looks better. In the next assignment, we will learn how to pick them up and count them.